Hello, I'm Grandmaster Ben Feingold. I'm still alive. So, as you all know, we've made two videos this week. This is video number two uh, in preparation for Carlson Caruana. And that's what Archer was going to answer before stuff happened. Now, we're at a chess camp today because today is election day and public schools are closed. Um, and some private schools are closed, but not many, so people can vote. I already voted, as you can see. And as you all know, I voted for Trump, except for one thing. Nope. Right, didn't vote for Trump. Also, you can't vote for Trump. He's not running, right? Yeah. Right. Who's the crazy guy running for governor? You! Brian Kemp. Wow, that's pretty good. And he's crazy like what? Fox News. Correct. That guy has good answers, right? Yeah. Okay. Now, this was terrible for me because when I was a kid, Kemp was my hero, but it was another Kemp. So, yeah. It's a baseball player, I think. I don't know. I forgot. Okay. Anyway, uh, the last video we talked about was uh, Caruana, and that took us uh, about 48 hours to put on the web. This will probably go up on Wednesday or Thursday, and the match is on Friday. Now, as you all know, it's a 12 game match. So whoever gets six and a half points wins, right? It's November 9 to November 28. Then, so they play like a game, then the next day they play a game, then the next day they take a rest. Now, Magnus Carlsen, who you've heard of, he posted a video today on Twitter saying, this is my preparation, and they showed him skiing. Yeah, okay. he likes that preparation. Okay. So I was telling people in the last video, the Caruana video, that if you go to Wikipedia, Magnus's name is not what you thought it was. See that name? Sven Magnus Owen Carlson. That's not even a letter of the alphabet. That's like some symbol for Batman or something. I don't know. Okay. And he was born in 1999 when I was living in Europe. He's 27 years old. Who's older, Carlson or Caruana? Let's vote. Who says Carlson's older? Who says Caruana's older? Carlson's slightly older. I think Caruana's 25, but it could be 26. Okay. Who? Yeah, he might be. I don't know. I'd have to like type some stuff in. Terrible. The people on the internet, they'll be like, what? He's 26 and three days and five hours and six minutes and nine seconds. And then like the next guy will be like, you mean 20 seconds? Because they typed it 11 seconds later. Okay. Now... So they have a very similar age. Carlson's been the world champion since 2013. And unfortunately for Carlson, his rating's been going down the last five years. Carlson's highest rating was 2882. That's like your rating, right? Yeah. Yeah. And now he's like 2835. So that's worse, but he's still the highest rated player in the world. And Normally in a world championship, it's sort of lucky who's playing, like that guy's playing because he won some matches. But now we have the two highest rated players in the world and their rating difference is only three or four rating points. So that's good, okay? Now, their games will take between three and a half and six hours for one game. And I'm doing commentary here at the Chess Center. So you can watch on the internet. I'll be like, rawr, stop playing so bad. And then Carwan will be like, who's talking? Okay. And you can watch on many sites. Okay, let's see if you guys have been paying attention the last few years. Which world chess champion was present at my first wedding? You. Smyslov. What? Smyslov. Yeah, close enough. Right. Vasily Smyslov. Yep. And what school did he go to? Old school. Old school. Yeah. He was old at my wedding. Now he's really old because he died years ago. All right. And then this is where he was born. Uh, Magnus Carlsen. Then there's him as a small child, like you, 13, a little older than you. And then these are like lots of games he played. Now, I've talked about this in many lectures, but you guys weren't listening. Right, Doric? Yeah. And what I talked about was, if you want to know how good somebody is at chess, don't look at their rating, don't look at them play, don't talk to them. Go to their Wikipedia page. When it's 20 pages long, they're good at chess. When it's like, Ben Feingold, he's a grandmaster, the end. And then, you know, it's like one millionth of one page. That's not as good, is it? Right? So you see, like, if I go here, it never ends. That's because he's really good. 
There's pictures of him year by year, all the stuff he's ever done, right? Drinking Norwegian water, okay? And what kind of wood does he use? Norwegian wood. You guys don't know the Beatles? No, you never heard of them. Yeah, terrible. Okay, and then it goes forever and ever and ever and ever and ever, right? And then it says, look what he's won. Look at his rating. That's good. Re ring does that, right? That's pretty good, right? No? Yeah. Okay, so then it never ends his Wikipedia page, so he must be good at chess. Now, I'll tell you a story, then we're going to do actual real chess. In 2011, were you all alive then? Yeah. Were you alive in 2011? No. Yeah. What year were you born? You don't know? 2010. So you were alive in 2011. Yeah. yeah. Unless you died for a year. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I can tell you a story about a guy who died for a year and then he just died yesterday. But anyway, uh, we were in China, okay, because there was the World Team Championship and I was a coach. And I think the U.S. came in third, I think. Anyway, uh, we went to a department store, like a store, like Macy's. Yeah. No? Okay. And then there was clothes, because it's a store, and there was like, you know, there's pictures on the wall here. There was pictures of like, you know, they have models and stuff, like buy these clothes. And one of the pictures was Magnus Carlsen in China. Like buy these clothes. Right? That's when you know you're famous, when they put your picture up in China and say buy his clothes. Right? He, he did work for G-Star Raw. He was a model. Very suspicious. Okay. So that's pretty famous. And then the guy I was with, who's the head of the St. Louis Chess Club, he, he told the, the woman at the register that was his brother. I'm not sure if she believed him. Okay. So what we're going to do before the lecture ends is we're going to look at two of, Akaru, two of Magnus's best games. One against Takaru Nakamura, one against Boris Gelfand. Now, N Nakamura has a very bad score against Carlsen, and Gelfand isn't too good either. Most people have a bad score against Carlsen, right? The one person, although there's probably like 10 people, the one person who's top 10 in the world who doesn't have a bad score is Anish Giri. Yeah, in fact, he had a plus score. That I, think, I think Magnus beat him once, so I think they're tied now. And Fabiano's score is okay. And then there's a guy, I think it's Nisi Pianu, but I confuse him with Nadich. I think I'm the only one in the world who does that. One of those guys has a good score against Carlson, but he's only like 2,700. He's not 2,800. So. You. Doesn't my Karyaka have a good score against Carlson? I don't think he has a good score. It's okay. I think he has a lot of draws. Yeah. Sure, it's not too bad. Okay. Now, a lot of people are mad at me. Okay, because, you know, you know who I am. You know how that works. Okay, and a lot of people like me a lot, and very few people are indifferent. Luckily, you don't know what indifferent means, so it doesn't matter. Um, the people who don't like me, they're like, you're always hating on Magnus, and you always say Magnus is terrible, and what's wrong with you? And none of that's true, but people are stupid, so they say stupid things. Okay, what I say is, Magnus is not a dominating world champion like previous world champions. Okay? And most people have a psychological problem. They think whatever is happening now is good. And then people who are 80 or 90 years old, they think people that think happening now is no good. Okay, I'm the right age. I know everything is good and no good. Yay, I'm smart. So people today who play chess say crazy things like, Magnus Carlsen's the greatest player who ever lived. Okay, that's a ridiculous statement because it's nowhere near being true. Now, what you want to do is take the top players in the world and compare them, right? So when Magnus plays in a tournament, is he going to win it? Maybe. When I say probably, I wouldn't say probably. Magnus might win 30% of the tournaments, and then the other like 10 guys win 70% combined, because he's better than them. Other world champions like Kasparov, Karpov, Fisher, you heard of them? When they played at a tournament, they were going to win the tournament. It wasn't like, oh, Kasparov didn't win, that's normal. And when Magnus wins the tournament, he gets six points, and second place gets five and a half points, right? When Kasparov won tournaments, he got nine points, and second place got six points. 
Kasparov dominated tournaments. Karpov dominated tournaments. Fisher dominated tournaments. Morphy dominated everybody in the world. Those guys were obviously the best. Nobody was even close. With Magnus, there's four players right now that are rated 28-20 to 28-35, right? They're all about the same. Now the best player in China, Ding Lerin, okay, he's played uh, a year and a half and hasn't lost a game, 96 games. Nice. So he's pretty good, right? Everybody he's playing is 2,700, 2,800, and he hasn't lost a game in 18 months. So Magnus isn't dominating him. Magnus isn't dominating Mama Jarov. Magnus isn't dominating Fabiano. However, Kasparov, Karpov, and Fisher, they dominated. If they didn't win a turn, people are like, what? He didn't win the tournament. If Carlson does win, like, yeah, he came in second. That's pretty good, right? Okay, now, <clears throat> Magnus is really good. And the reason people like Magnus is he does something unusual. He wins a lot of positions where everybody thinks it's a draw. Then they stop thinking that. They're like, ah, oh, that's a draw. Then an hour later, Magnus wins. And they're like, how did he win? Then the next game, oh, that's equal. Then Magnus wins. Now they stop thinking that. They're like, oh, it's equal. Magnus will win. Now they think that. They think the opposite. Magnus wins a lot of games where nobody thinks he could possibly win. However, the second game is like that. The first game, he plays super aggressive, which is unusual. <clears throat> if you want to be the world champion, I recommend being good at everything, not just one kind of chess. Good at tactics, good at positional play, good at strategy, good opening preparation. Carlson has all of that, and so does Fabiano. Okay, Carlson's white against Nakamura. You guys can see? All right. I can make it a little bigger. There you go. Now you can see better. Okay. And they played normal opening. Queen's Gambit. Not too exciting. And this has been played a lot. The point of queen c2 is black wants to play bishop f5. That's a good square. Now black doesn't want to play bishop f5. Right? Because then you lose it. Okay. So he goes bishop g4. That way he can go here and here. <clears throat> then his bishop is out. He got it out. Okay? And he did what I said. Good job, Nakamura. Okay, and Magnus Castle Queenside, which is very unusual for Magnus. Magnus usually plays really boring, and then when you fall asleep, he says your flag's down, you fell asleep. Right? Okay. Here, Magnus is like, rawr! You made 7,000 bishop moves in a row, so I'm going to play aggressive and mate you. And then Nakamura said, no talking. Right? Okay. When your opponent moves the same piece every move, Maybe they shouldn't do that. And so Magnus is like, I'm going to checkmate you because you move the same piece every move. Okay, he plays F3, breaking a very important rule. Never play F3. Right. And he figures, I'm going to play in the center or I'm going to attack on the king's side. Either way, I want my pawn on F3. And Nakamura plays B5. Now, once black plays B5, Everything is determined. Before b5, I wasn't sure which way Nakamura would castle. He could castle queenside. Now, this is the advanced class, and we're at a chess camp here. If this was the other side of the chess camp, the kids would start crying. Because when the bishop can go here, most of them think black can't castle. Because they don't know the castling rules. You guys are better, right? Mm -hmm. Now, I have a funny story. Twice in my life, twice, not once, twice, I had students who were class A players, like Doric, and they were showing me a game they played in a tournament, and they said, here I castled queenside, and my opponent said it was illegal. It was like that reason. And I was like, they were like, no. And the director showed up and had to make a ruling. And the director's like lower rated than the players. And both times my students told me that, their opponents were also A players. So class A players, 50-50, don't know the rules of chess. Let's see if the computer knows. Let's play another move, queen A5. 
always play king b1. Can black castle, is that legal? Yeah. Yeah, see? If it was illegal, the computer wouldn't let me do it. Okay, like if I played king here, the computer's like, no, you can't do that. Okay, if I played rook here, and then rook here, can I castle? No. The computer won't let me because it's illegal. So if it lets me, it's legal. Okay. So Kaspar, so uh, Nakamura's like, I'm not going to castle a queen side. I'm going to mate you. And, and Carlson said, no talking. He played b5. Now, black's not going to castle that way. Black's going to push all of his pawns and checkmate Carlson. That was his plan. Okay. And so now they checkmate each other because they did something you've never heard of, even though I say it every lecture, called opposite side castling. When there's opposite side castling, not the same side, opposite side, then everybody pushes all their pawns and mates each other. That's exciting for us, right? Okay. So he plays e4, as I said he might. b4, knight out, takes, takes. And white has a great position. Look at that center. Isn't that great? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Queen a5. Always play. Always play. King b1. King b1. It's one of my rules. Well, this is a half open file, so we don't want our king there. And this pawn wasn't protected, so now it's protected. King b1. Hooray. Castles. H4. So both sides checkmate each other. Problem is, white has a nice center. And white has two pawns in front of his king, and this pawn went away. So we can open the H file. So this looks like a good position for white. Now, to be fair to Nakamura, Nakamura is a very tricky player, and Carlson likes more boring standard positions where he's slightly better. So you would think in this kind of position, uh, Nakamura would play pretty well. Maybe Carlson wouldn't, because Carlson doesn't like this kind of game. Nakamura does. Unfortunately, getting the kind of game you like, archer style, sometimes means getting a bad position, archer style. Then, archer's opponent is rated 1500, so archer wins easily. But Magnus Carlson's not rated 1500. So if you get a position where the computer says, your position's not good, but it's really complicated, your opponent might make a lot of mistakes, right? But if you're playing Magnus Carlsen, your opponent might not make a lot of mistakes. Then you lose. <coughs> Truth hurts. Okay. So he played rook e8. Now his bishop can go to f8. His knight can go to f8. And his rook's on an open line instead of blocked by this pawn. e5. h5. Rawr. Man, white's attack's pretty quick, right? Where's black's attack? The answer is? No fries. Fries. G5. So G5, he tries to keep the H file closed. Otherwise, if I take, the H file is not closed. Right? Okay, in H6, he sacrifices a piece. Again, not very Carlson-like, but Carlson says checkmate's pretty good. Right? So if Carlson can play H takes G, then he's threatening queen h7 mate with advantage. Okay. So g6, blocking the queen. Bishop c1, saving the bishop. Looks like white has an attack and black doesn't. Knight b6, trying to attack. So now, if Nakamura, if Carlson takes this and black takes with a pawn, then black's threatening mate. Queen, h, queen a2 mate, right? Yeah. So probably he didn't do that. Knight c5, keeping the a-file blocked. Takes. Now let's vote. Should we take with the queen or take with the pawn? Who says with the queen? Who says with the pawn? See, this is funny. I don't know the answer. I don't know which way he took. If it was anybody who ever played ever, it would be pawn takes. Well, this is Carlson. So it could be either one. Carlson likes endgames. I would take with the pawn without thinking. Then I would lose. 
Okay, Carlson also takes to the pawn. B3, Nakamura's like, rawr, and Magnus said, no growling, right? Now, there's two threats, taking the queen and checkmate. That's good threats, okay? So Carlson took, and Nakamura took. So, over the last few moves, Nakamura has a nice knights in the center. That knight's going to be there forever. Unfortunately, I don't see any attack for black. White's king looks pretty safe. Black's king? That doesn't look very safe, does it? Okay. Knight d4. Now, I want to remind everybody, because you're confused. When this game was played, Magnus was not the world champion. This was played in 2011. Who was the world champion in 2011? I know the answer. Do you guys know? You. Kasparov? Close. Kasparov retired in 2005. You. Kramnik? Kramnik? Close. I'm not sure which one he was closer. Kasparov? That's what he said. If you say Kasparov again, it's right. You. Kasparov? Correct. No. Should I give you guys a hint? Sure. If I give you a hint, all of you will know. You. Oh, Lama Jarrah. Lama has never been the world champion and never will be. The correct answer is he's from India. This one um, Yeah. You never heard of him, right? I know him. What? I know him. Have you been to his house in Tamil Nadu? No. Have I? No. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. I knew Anand before you were born. I even knew Anand before most of you were born at home. You. Anand. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, the truth hurts. I met Anand. Uh, also, Anand, in 1986 in England. And I played him. Did you win? No, I was down a piece, and then later I was up a piece. So I won two pieces. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. And then it was a draw. We're good. We were both 16. What school do we go to now? Old school. Old school. Fact, I'm older than Anand now. I win. But next month he catches up. I'm three months older. I had my birthday. He didn't have his yet. Okay, now what's funny is there's never super GM tournaments in India for obvious reasons. And they're having one that starts like tomorrow. But it's a rapid tournament. And Anand's playing. And so is like a lot like Nakamura and etc. Mainly. Same. Right. Okay. Uh, anyway, so Black played. Rook takes pawn, because why not? It's a pawn, right? As we say in Futurama, Rook takes pawn shop. Remember that? Yeah. 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 All right now, who went to the Rook Takes Pawn Shop? Yeah. Bender. He sold his body. Oh, yeah. He ah, now you remember. Now, yeah, that's right. Okay. okay. And then he wanted his body back. It was Pondemonium. Now, who bought Bender's body? You. Richard Nixon. Richard Nixon. Pretty good for being dead for a thousand years. Yeah. Right. Okay. Knight F3. Also knife f3, that's a fork and a half. Right? Yeah. One and a half forks. Rookie two, knight g5. Both sides are checkmating each other. But mainly white's checkmating black. Because black doesn't really have an attack. How does black get in there? Queen e7, defense. Queen d3, rook f8, rook f1. F5, boo! Okay, F5 is sort of giving up, but I'm guessing he was afraid of something like knight F7 and then queen G6. That looks annoying, right? So he's like, nah, you're not doing that. G4. Which one of my students would play G4? Matt Larson. Matt Larson. Again, white's attacking black. Black's not attacking white. So, okay. Knight a4, here comes Nakamura. Queen d4. Now, if it was white's move, which it's not, what would white play? Doric. H7. He would put it in H, recommended by which grandmaster? Yeah. Ginger GM. Ginger GM. Okay. Ginger GM has been killing it lately. He stopped streaming for three weeks and he played in GM tournaments. And he did great. Now he's going to play in the British Knockout Championship. 
that he's going to learn the term knocked out. The truth hurts. He's one of the weaker players in the knockout because, you know, a lot of grandmasters playing. Okay. But yeah, he beats some 2,600. Man. Okay. So Nakamura's like H7. That looks pretty good. Right? Yeah. So we better do something about that. Queen E5. Takes, takes. And even though it's the end game, he's still attacking. Also, his pawn structure is not too good. That's some weak pawns over there. And now here comes the attack. Rawr, I'm still attacking you. That's the meanest move ever. Yeah, he's still attacking. So if he takes for the crowd, check. See how it's check because I said so? Yeah. yeah, and then I win the exchange. Yeah. So he played king h8, rook g1, knight h4. Is that a serious threat? No. Pretty serious, yeah. yeah. I like the way it's the end game, and he's still checkmating his opponent. Rook takes, and then he resigned. Or his time ran out, one of them. Now what's funny is, when I turned the engine on yesterday, I was wondering, hmm, I wonder which is more winning, taking with the pawn or taking with the rook? And the computer's like, yeah, they're both really winning. Whichever one he does, it's really winning. Doesn't matter. Because your f5 pawn is hanging, and obviously Hikaru doesn't want to allow knife f5, right? Now when the game's over, we turn the engine on, it says something crazy, like plus a billion, right? Everything's good for white. Okay, what's funny is uh, this king is really, really, really safe. Th this king was never safe, right? So that was a very unusual Magnus game until the end. Then he's like, oh, I'll win the end game. Okay, but he won the game, uh, won the game with attack. That was unusual. Magnus got a big attack against Nakamura's king, and Ma Magnus's king was pretty safe. Pretty safe. Okay, now the next game was very disturbing to me, but it actually gave me a win. Okay, I'll explain. Now, when you're a grandmaster like me, what you're supposed to do is do lots of opening preparation and do a lot of study. Now, a lot of you have heard of a television station called HBO. Yeah. Okay, and HBO, a week ago, had a television show on called Real Sports with Brian Gumbel. That's the name of the show. And they talk about sports. Makes sense. And in the last episode, they talked about the St. Louis Chess Club. And they interviewed people in St. Louis, mainly Rex Singfield. And they talked to Fabiano. And they're like, dude, you're playing for the world championship. And he's like, I know it. And then the woman who was interviewing him, Soledad O'Brien, she said, how much do you study chess? And he said, Mm, about 10 hours a day. Is that what you guys do? You guys don't even play video games 10 hours a day. What's wrong with you? Okay, so if you study chess all day, you can get good. What else does Fabiano do? Does, is he a construction worker? No, he does chess. Now, here's why you guys aren't good at anything. Okay, one is your little kids. The other reason is, you didn't dedicate yourself to anything. So for example, you turn on the TV and there's a football game on, okay? That's what I did last night, okay? And then when you see the guys, they're like all muscle and nine feet tall and fast, right? And you're like, man, that guy was born like that. He was born nine feet tall and all muscle and fast? No. So what a football player does when he's not playing football is he works out. He goes to the gym and he lifts weights and he goes to the field and he runs and he practices. And whoever does that the most, they're the best. So if you want to be the best at chess, you go to chess camp and the other kids don't go to chess camp. You study chess all day and the other kids don't study chess all day. You play in chess tournaments and the other kids don't play in chess tournaments. Now you're better than them. If you're like, that kid's better than me, I quit. See, I wanted to be bigger than you, so I ate more than you. And now you're all tiny and I'm big. I win. 
If you want to be bigger than me, you better start eating, right? And then you have no hope because you're like nine years old and 10 years old, never be bigger than me. Okay, so coincidentally, I knew this game after it was played because I played this opening with black and black got crushed. Okay, but I knew how to play black. I just made sure I never played Magnus, right? And so about three years ago, I played a player you've never heard of called Walter Brown. He was the US champion six times. That's pretty good, right? And he was top 30 in the world for many years. And I beat him and he died the next year. And the doctor said cause of death, losing to Ben Feingold, he couldn't take it. He's like, I lost to Ben? So he's like, that's it, right? Okay, and it turned out we followed this game because I knew the game, except Walter Brown doesn't play as good as Magnus. So, okay. And it was a Sicilian. You've heard of that, right? Okay. And now the open Sicilian is what move for white? D4. D4. Okay. And my opponent played Bishop B5. Okay. And this is my game with Walter Brown and it's Magnus's game with Boris Gelfand. Okay, and I've had this position before with black, but I never knew what to do. And then I saw this game, so I knew what to do. Okay, and Boris played knight f6. That's what I did against Walter Brown. Attacking the deep one one million times. Yay. And then bishop e3 defends it. Takes, takes, bishop d7. And this is my game with Walter Brown. And I beat Walter Brown in about 65 moves in about five and a half hours in a long end game. Magnus beat Gelfand sort of the same way. Now I was better than Walter Brown when we played because Walter Brown was in his 60s. When Walter Brown was in his 20s and 30s and 40s, he was better than me, a lot better than me. But he was in his 60s and I was in my 30s or 40s, and I'm probably better than him. Okay, c4, that's explosive. And you can see this is really boring. I think this is my game with Walter Brown also, I think so. Okay, this is really boring. And what's funny is in the last game, if you remember, do you remember? Magnus's king was on b1 and his bishop was on c1, remember that? And now it's on the opposite side of the board. It's the same thing, it's just the opposite side of the board. You see how safe Magnus's king is? It's always safe. <clears throat> if you don't checkmate him, how are you gonna win? Okay. A3. Now, somebody explain the move A3 to me. A3. Why did he do that? They're like, I don't know. Okay, there's something you never heard of called pawn majorities. There's majorities, majorities more. Today's election day, right? So if somebody gets more votes than the other person, they have the majority, they win. If we, if we split the board in two, on the king's side, white has three pawns and black has four pawns. On the queen's side, white has more pawns. When you have more pawns, you have a chance to make a queen. So Magnus is like, ooh, I'm going to push my pawns and make a queen. And you guys are like, make a queen? He'll never make a queen. I know the game, so I know he made a queen. And this is typical. <clears throat> if you're going to push all the pawns, do you push pawns in front of your king or not in front of your king? Not in front of, not in front of your king. So Magnus isn't going to push these pawns, that his king will be exposed. He's going to push these pawns, and he has more of them. He's got three to two. And, and Galfan's like, no, you're not going to move your pawn there. I'm going to stop you. And then Magnus said, no talking. Not very exciting. Okay, now, in this position... Black played queen d8, confusing the audience, right? Let's say instead, black didn't confuse the audience and played rook d8. 
Oh, bathroom's down the hall. What would White do in this position? Doric. Bishop C7. Bishop C7. Bam. And that's called a spoon or chopsticks or a knife? It's a fork. A fork. Okay. So Galphant took with the queen. <coughs> And finally, Magnus got his pawn majority going. B4. Now, some of you are confused. You're like, wait a minute. <clears throat> black played A5 to stop B4. So black has two things defending B4. Fortunately, this bishop is needed to defend the knight. You see what's happening over here? So if black just takes and takes, then his knight's not defended, right? So did he do that? No. So he did take, then he played knight h5, attacking Magnus' as queen. And Magnus attacked the knight, and he attacked Magnus' as queen, and they traded everything. Queen a5, that was the key move. I'm guessing Gelfin didn't see that. Gelfin's like, dude, I'm attacking everything. And my rook can come to the back rank later. And Carlson said, dude, your back rank's not defended. The only defense to your back rank is this rook, so queen a5. I'm guessing three or four moves ago, Gelfan didn't see queen a5. That's why Magnus is the world champion, and Boris is like, what? <clears throat> Don't do that. Now, this was before the world, this was the candidates tournament to become the world champion. Okay, so we're threatening checkmate because I said so. So what did Black do? Gotta stop checkmate. Mm-hmm. Okay. Rook F8. And Magnus is like, but I want to checkmate you. Queen B6, everything is defended. Right? And now, White's going to make a queen, like I said. Is Black going to make a queen? Nope. No. Okay, e5. And here comes white. He's going to make a queen. And he's up a pawn, but black wants to checkmate white, but then white gets to checkmate black. Everybody checkmates everybody. Okay, and obviously white's winning. White has an extra pawn. And white has two to one on the queen side. And he's like, I want to make a queen. Okay. Now in this position, instead of taking the pawn on c5 and losing slowly, he played aggressive. Queen e1. He said, ha ha, I'm going to win your bishop. Hmm? Yeah. See, bishop c4 wins the bishop. Right? Yeah. And Magnus is like, all right, you can win my bishop as long as I queen. And Galfin's like, great, I win a bishop. And then Magnus is like, great, I'm going to make a queen. Ah, I flipped the board by accident. No. Okay. Magnus is like, I'm going to make a queen. I'm the best. Okay. So he played queen b1. b7. Man, it's getting close to queening, isn't it? Look at that. Man, the truth hurts. Remember I told you in the first game and the second game how safe Magnus' king was? That's a pretty safe king. Right? Yep. Now, Gelfand, who played for the world championship the year before against Anand, pretty good player. You guys, not as good. Let's see if you can do what Galfan did. Magnus wants to make a queen. You agree. How did Galfan stop it? You. Presiding. Correct. Yeah. He's like, ooh, I can stop you from queening. I give up. That'll do it, right? Yeah. So Magnus had the advantage on the queen side, and he pushed all of his pawns up, and then Galfan resigned. Yeah, queen takes b7, then bishop takes b7. Yeah. Man, the truth hurts. Yeah. Then I have the queen b3 fork. Stopping bishop d5. Man, I'm a genius. Okay, so 
that was a typical Magnus game. Nothing much happened, and Magnus is like, hmm, I'll make a queen. He pushes pawns and he queened. And Gelfand's like, darn, why'd you do that? Okay, and when I saw that game, I was thinking, I played that line for Black. I don't know what Black did wrong. I guess what he did wrong is he played Magnus. So I played that line with Black, and I won against uh, Walter Brown, and I also won against Casa Corley, an international mask you've never heard of. So it seems to me the better player will win. It's about equal, and now we know who the better player is. Not, not Gelfand. Now, Gelfand has a good excuse. He's old. He's old. He's older than me. Is that possible? So I'm like, nobody's older than you. Ridiculous, right? Yeah, so Gelfand was in his 40s. He was about 45 years old, and Carlson was like 22 years old? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, if Gelfand was 22 years old, he would have beaten Carlson because Carlson wouldn't have been alive yet, right? He would show him. It's like, you're not even born. I got you. Yeah. So Gelfand has been top 50 in the world for 35 years. Right? And now he's going down, 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 because he's old like me. He's older than me. You know how old he is? When we played, I beat him. That's how old he is. What? I was 19 and he was 21. Yeah, I played him in 1989 or 90. I forgot. One, one. one of them. Yeah. And then I haven't played Gelfand since because if I did, he'd crush me. So I ran away to another country. I showed him, right? So in those games, Magnus was white and he kept increasing his advantage at the same time, keeping his king safe. Okay, in one game, he went for checkmate. In this game, he went for making a queen. Now, this is the problem a lot of kids have and your kids. Okay, when Archer plays a chess game, like the, the goal for Archer is sack a pawn on move one or two. Yeah. Opponents like, ah, chess is hard. And then, and then Archer takes all his pieces. Okay, now if you want to be a grandmaster, you can't have such goals. Your goal should be, I want to win. If I sack a pawn and win, great. If my opponent blunders a knight and wins, great. If I have a mating attack, and I meet my opponent, great. If I'm two pawns up in the end game and I make a queen, great. Okay? When you're a grandmaster, you win any way you can, whatever the opponent lets you do. Weaker players who play at our chess center, they have a style they want to play that way. And I'm like, if you'd play the other way, you're just winning. And they're like, I don't play that way. You don't play good moves? And they're like, no, I don't. Well, never play good moves. So I try to have a universal style where I like playing boring because I blunder less. But if the right move is to sack a piece and mate my opponent, and I know that's the right move, that's what I do. But I don't like doing that, but then you gotta make the right move. I like when I take all my opponent's pieces and they don't know what's going on. And in the next lectures today, I'm gonna show you games I played in the last four days. I played a lot of Grandmasters. I probably played 50 games with Grandmasters the last four days. That's more than I played like in the last three years. Just in the last four days. I played in two tournaments. One was a three minute tournament and one was a one minute tournament. And then in the three minute tournament, we got to the knockout matches, which was seven minute. And I played Grandmasters like every round. And then people were like, ah, you suck, Fine Gold. Those grandmasters will crush you. And only some of them crushed me. I beat some of them, right? Just like people on the wall behind you, they're all grandmasters, especially me, right? Yeah, that's me. Yeah, that was in Atlanta. Uh, I was giving a simul. So let's vote. And then when the video comes out, the people can make fun of children. They like doing that. Ready to vote? Yeah. In the match, who thinks Magnus is going to win the match against Caruana? Magnus. Who thinks Caruana is going to win? And you two have no opinion? Sure, what? Magnus you want Magnus to win? What about you? Now, Magnus is from Norway and Caruana is from America. Go America, right? America. 
What? Boo America? Yeah. Correct. Yeah. All right, so most of them said Magnus. They voted for the world champion and the higher rated player. Now, the reason most people think he'll win <clears throat> is because if the match is tied six to six, they have a rapid playoff, like 25 minutes, and Magnus seems like he's much better than Fabi when it's rapid and blitz. But when it's slow chess, they're about the same. So if the match is six to six, everybody thinks Carlson will win. So he sort of has draw odds. The world champion used to have draw odds, now they don't, they gotta play. And we had several matches recently that ended six to six. For example, Carlson Karyakin, six to six, two years ago, and then Carlson won the playoff. Also in 2012, I think, Anand Gelfand, six to six. So they had a playoff and Anand won. So if it goes six to six, most people think Magnus will win. And by most, I mean all. So Fabiano's got to win in regulation because Magnus is too good at rapid and blitz. So we'll find out. These videos should be posted before the match. I'm predicting that Fabi wins. Magnus is the world champion for five years. Time for somebody else. When I was growing up, Karpov was always the world champion my whole life. And then when Kasparov beat him, I was confused. I was like, somebody else is the world champion? How can that be? Now I'm used to it. Now they change. So I'm used to people changing. That's okay. Right? Yeah. But when I was a kid, I was like, wow, Karpov's not the world champion. He wins every tournament. He's the highest rated. He's been world champion my whole life. How can somebody else be world champion? But that's what happened. Right? Yeah. Time for somebody else. Rawr. And then, if Fabi wins the world championship, I have a good score against the world champion. We played one tournament game. Ow. I hurt my hand, but I beat him. You know why I beat him? He was, uh... He was like two years old. Yes. Yeah, he was 11, I think. He was like 22, 50. So I took him to school. Because, you know, he was 11. So gotta go to school. Alright, that's the Magnus Carlsen lecture. And... Uh, if you guys go to YouTube, you kids, you can see the Fabiano lecture. You with some crazy comment. How many games have you played Carlson? Me? Yeah. In tournaments? Zero. But I played him in the Pro Chess League. I forgot what happened. But I didn't forget. I've never played Magnus anything except the Pro Chess League we played once. <laughs> Whose team won? My team or Magnus's team? Your team. My team won. Huh. Magnus beat all of us, then we beat all his teammates. His teammates were suspicious. And you beat Obama. I beat Obama? Yeah, you beat Obama. Oh, I beat Mama Jarov. I could also beat my mom in chess. All right, time for free play. Go into the other room and never come back. Good job. Also, boo.